Hi everybody, welcome to this object-oriented programming tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at an introduction to inheritance and we're going to be using Java to help us illustrate this concept. We're going to be looking at a computer program which is going to construct instances of different classes. Um, we've got the bunny class, the bird class, the frog class and the crocodile class. Yes folks, these are all animals. And they all exhibit very similar behavior within the program that we're going to be designing. And they all store the same properties. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. The bird class stores a, a string and an integer. These are the two properties of the bird class. The constructor method assigns a parameter to the name property. And it sets the score property to zero. Brilliant. We also have standard accessor and mutator methods in the class because we are using data hiding to keep our data secure. So that's the bird class, two properties, a constructor method with a string and some regular accessor and mutator methods. If we look in the frog class we're going to see exactly the same thing because a frog is an animal within my computer program and it, its behavior is very similar to a bird. It also has a name and a score. The constructor method is set up the same. And we have standard accessor and mutator methods to allow external classes to manipulate the data stored in any frog object. And if we were to look in the crocodile class, we're going to see exactly the same thing. Okay. So to illustrate what inheritance is all about, let's jump into our IDE and let's get coding. I've already designed a main class with my uh, main function here, which um, constructs instances of each of the classes that I'm working with. And I'm constructing a bird object, a bunny object, a frog object, and a crocodile object. Okay. And if I was to do a system.out.print um, bird.getScore I have to use the method to access the score property because I am using data hiding. Okay, so here's my reference variable to the to this bird object, and I'm going to use that variable to call the get score method of the bird class. Let's just make sure it exists. There it is. There's the get score method of the bird class. So we can call that through this reference variable, and hopefully we'll see the value zero. Brilliant, it works. Now the issue here is that, let's say that within my design, I decide to make some changes. I decide to include within my design a health value for this game character. Now because all of my characters in the game are exhibiting the same behavior, I'm going to have to make this change to all of the classes, bunny, crocodile, and frog. I'm also going to have to update the constructor method to initialize the health value. And because I'm using data hiding, I'm also going to have to create an accessor method for the health, get health. I'm not going to type that out, but you know what, I'm, you know what I mean. And I'm going to have to create a mutator method, set health which will allow me to change the value stored in the health property. Now, of course, I'm not just going to have to do that in the bird class. I'm going to have to do that in the bunny class, because a bunny is an animal in the game, and it also is going to need a health value. A crocodile is going to need that as well, and a frog is going to need that as well. So this is a bit awkward. I've got to make the same change to multiple classes. It's time consuming and it opens up the avenue for errors. As usual, computer programmers, very smart people, have come up with a way to make this process faster uh, and more efficient and less prone to errors. The idea is to create a superclass. Remember, I told you, every character in my game is an animal. And all animals have similar or the same properties and behavior. 
described by these methods. So I'm just going to remove the health stuff for a minute. We'll come back to that later. So what we want to do is take all of the properties that are common to animals and put those properties into our superclass. Also, we want to take any methods which are common to all of the animals and put those into the superclass. There we are. These are all common to animal type objects in the program that we are creating. Okay? And we've just decided that a bird is an animal, a bunny is an animal, a crocodile is an animal, and a frog is an animal. These are all animals, really. So let's make an animal superclass and collect all of the common properties and all of the common methods relating to animals. I'm also going to design a constructor method for the animal class, which takes a string as a parameter, assigns that string to the class property, and sets the class property score to zero. Because this is what happens when we construct animals. We've already seen that. Okay, so let's just kind of copy that way of doing things in our super class. There we go. Now then, this is where it gets very interesting. The frog class, I've just told you, is an animal. Okay? So what we want to happen, we want the frog class to inherit all of the properties and methods from this super class, which is the animal class. This is the super class. And we want the frog class to inherit all of those properties and methods. Now, unfortunately, in Java, we don't have an is a keyword to describe this relationship. Java uses this keyword, extends. What this means is, the frog is an animal. That's what that means. And because a frog is an animal, it's going to inherit all of the properties and methods in this superclass. So we no longer need to define these common properties in the frog class. We're in the frog class here. We don't need to do that anymore. And all of these common accessor methods, which are now described in the superclass, we don't need them anymore. And we don't need the mutator methods. Those are now described in the animal class, and the frog class will inherit them. Now, in my main program, when I construct an instance of a frog, I still need to call the frog constructor method. Okay? Now, the name property and the score property are no longer described in the frog class. They're now described in the super class. So we, we're getting an error now. But it's kind of easy to fix. All we're going to do is call the super constructor and send it this parameter. Now remember, the super constructor is this one. This is the super constructor. And all it needs is a string. So let's give it a string, send it the string, and let it handle the score. Because when we call the super constructor, it will first of all process the name, and then it manages the score. We don't need to do that in the frog class. So we can just delete that. Wow! This is my new frog class. It's pretty much empty. Will this work? Let's find out. Let's go back to my main program. Let's do frog. Let's use this reference variable, which is communicating with a frog object, and see if we can get the frog score. Yes! Now, in the frog is a frog. So when we go into the frog class to look for the get score method, we're not going to find it. It's not there. But because it is inheriting from the animal class, it actually inherits it from the superclass. Okay? So we can do that 
for all of our other classes. I'm going to do this, guys. It's going to take two minutes. And if you want to skip ahead, skip ahead. A crocodile is an animal. And in the animal superclass, it will manage the common properties of all and methods of all animal subclasses. And all we have to do in our constructor method here in this example is call the super constructor and send it the name and it will manage it. We're going to do the same in the bunny class. A bunny is an animal. So anything, any common property which is already described in the animal superclass or any common method, we no longer need to describe those in the subclass. I am going to update the constructor method. And we'll just finish off with the bird. Common properties of animals. Common methods of animals. Now described in the animal superclass. And I'm just going to send the name parameter to the super constructor. Hmm. Why are we getting an error here? We're getting an error because I have not told Java that the bird is an animal. Okay, so, brilliant. Now, do you remember I was suggesting that every animal in the game will also have a property called health? And let's, let's make this a private property. So I'm going to have to do three things here. I'm going to have to include the property in the class, update the constructor method, and create accessor and mutator methods for that new property. And I'm going to have to do that in the bird class, the bunny class, the crocodile class, and the frog class, because they are all animals in the game, and they all exhibit the same behavior. But if I use inheritance, I don't need to do that. I just need to include this new common property and methods in the superclass. So let's quickly do that. We've got a new common property, common to all animals. I'm going to update my constructor method. I'm going to create a accessor method. And I'm going to create a mutator method. Boom! Done. Once. I did it once. And now all of these classes which inherit from the animal class can use these properties and methods. So just to explain that, let's say I'm going to use, I'm going to say frog.getHealth and run. And let's just do the same for croc. See what the croc health is. The reference variable, of course, is croc. This one here. It is a crocodile object. And we're going to call the get health method of the croc crocodile class. Where is it? It's not there. We are inheriting that method from the animal class. Okay. So if we run the program, it should work. And that is an introduction to inheritance.